All right, guys, TC Mave here with TC Gaming. Just wanted to bring you a uh, quick live stream, something I talked about the other night for a uh, vaulting and climbing system and, uh, you know, what your end output of this whole thing should be is uh, basically, you know, a thing where when you come up to a small wall, you can vault over top of it, a wall that's slightly taller and not thick, you can climb over and something that you're climbing up onto a higher surface that actually has a space you can walk on, you would climb up onto that. Even if you're up a little higher, you can jump up and uh, you can go through windows. Even if you have multiple stories to a building, as long as you have this set up correctly, you shouldn't be able to grab a ledge in a spot where there's no opening. And then at the very height of this, if you were to jump up and hit the jump button again, you could climb through that second story window. Now, I've turned a couple of the things off for my uh, purposes, but I want to show you where this all came from. And I'm not going to go through step by step of how to build this what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you where it is and how you can build it and i've put a demo project up there for you this was actually originally presented by a website called faf action which i've included the description of in the uh in the description of this video there's links to the original material and the site and you should definitely go check that out and make sure that you watch the tutorial uh, again, I'm only going to explain the general idea of how this thing is set up and not go through the step-by-step -step of wiring up all the pins. But at the end of this, you should uh, be able to figure out how to do it for yourself. So, real quick, let me pull this up and show you the FAF version of this. So, if you go into my playlists, I have a playlist link in here. And one of the ones is for this uh, simple vault and climb. If you go to view full playlist. And he has a thing on here for FAF action for the updated version with his vocals in here. And then he also has a replication version which he talks about a little bit. And you can go back and watch some of the things that are required for that. This uh, process was originally brought to me by someone who was watching my channel. Um, and I'm just going to call him the Yaz Man or whatever. And I uh, just give him a shout out and I appreciated him sharing this with me. So I wanted to bring it to you guys as well. This is a, a light version of something similar to what most of us are probably looking for when we go to something like ALS version 4. You know, we like to be able to go up to an object, climb up onto the surface of it, um, you know, vault over, jump, things like that. But ALS 4 has a lot of complicated moving parts to it and can have a lot of heavy lifting if you're not familiar with what's going on in there. Very challenging. But this, uh, you know, with some very simplistic code... Uh, blueprints in here you can get the same thing working and what I want to show you in here is that in his video he has a couple of links in here and he gives you the blueprint for the vault and climb system which I've also hyperlinked in the description of mine the blueprint with replication that he talks about in his other videos and then he's also given you the link to the animation files to download all that stuff and you get a three-part video that shows you the actual step-by-step -step of you know wiring up of each pin and how this thing works. So you definitely want to go to this for the source after seeing this video. Hopefully it directs you over there. And, you know, like and follow and subscribe to this guy. Keep an eye on what he's doing. I've seen variations of this actually starting to pop up. Um, I think somebody's in the process of releasing a version of this in a packaged product for Unreal Engine. So I'll apologize in advance if I'm stepping on somebody's toes here is putting something out. But this was you know, publicized and uh, freely available. And the original video for this is actually uh, back about eight or nine months ago. Uh, this is a re-upload for this guy. So with uh, without dragging this on too much longer, let me go in here and also show you that in my, um, in my description for the video, you're going to find a link out to my Google Drive where I keep my Unreal training downloads for animation files and things like that that I talk about in my other videos. And then also in this demos and samples folder, I've put a vault and climbing project which includes the thing that we're talking about and showing here, plus the Vault and Climb code, the version that I'm using in mine, and then I have in the video description also the links to all the other ones. So, let's go in here and take a look at what we have and how this is set up. So, one of the things that you can do with his or mine is if you go in here and you get this blueprint for Vault and Climb system, it actually pulls up a link to a document. And you can simply go in here and highlight that document, hit Control A, which is going to select everything, and then hit Control C to copy it. And if you go into Unreal Engine and you're in a blueprint, I'm going to show you, I'll just create a simple blueprint real quick. So if I said um, create a blueprint for a character, and I, I'm not going to do much with it, 
But if I go into the um, My Blueprint section of this in the Event Graph, if you just go into that and pick an area and hit Control-V, it's going to paste the blueprint from that code into your project. Now when you go to compile this, of course, it's going to have a lot of failures because you don't have everything set up. It's going to be missing pins and things like that, you know. And I'll show you how to straighten those out. But that's the basic process of getting this thing up and running to start with. So let me get rid of this real quick. Uh, what we're going to do is in our third person character blueprint, in my version of this, I've actually gone in and put quite a few comments in here for you. So if you read this, what you find is that the Climb and Vault code system was originally featured on the FAF Action channel on YouTube. I give you the link to his video there. And in order for this to work, you need to add four vector variables, which I show over here on the left-hand side, these um, vector variables. If you don't know how to add those, you basically go to the variable section, you can hit the plus button, and it'll pull it up. And then over here in your details panel, you can determine what type of uh, variable that's going to be. So these are vector variables. And the vector variables that we need are wall location, wall normal, wall height, and back wall height. And then you also need four Boolean, um, or Boolean, 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 I usually say Boolean. But you need uh, four Boolean variables, which are should climb, wall thick, is climbing, and can climb. And again, you set those up the same way. Now, the code references these variables in here. And uh, basically what this thing does, in a nutshell is uh, that you go in and it runs a couple of uh, traces to find out if you're standing in front of a wall and determine how thick that wall is and then from that decision to decide which one of your animation montages to play. So um, I also de um, detail that a little bit in here. You also need to um, go in and add an arrow component to your capsule. So where that is, if you go in the viewport, you see this arrow, you would go into the components tab or under the My Blueprint tab or Components tab here, and you go to your Capsule Component, and you would say Add Component, and then you can type in Arrow, and it should pull that up, and you'll be able to drop one in there. And I've already done that. But what, are, what we're doing with the arrow, we keep it down around our knees and facing straight forward, and what it does is it casts a, uh, a ray trace out from that location of the arrow and tries to detect objects. And once it detects them, it goes and plays and invokes this code. So... Uh, let's go down here a little bit further and talk about some of the other stuff that's required for the setup. So if I go back into the event graph, um, in addition to the arrow component on your capsule, you also need to go into your animation blueprint and create a default slot. And so what that looks like is in our animation blueprint for our character, third person anim BP for example, if you go to the anim graph section of that, and you go to the default here, you can go in and put a slot default group and just interrupt it in between your default state machine and your output pose. Normally this is connected directly to that. So you just right click in here and you just type in slot and see that the slot default slot would pop up and then you just rewire the pins to it. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, detail where those montages are going to get played and if you don't do this portion of it, this process will not work correctly. So um, that's some of the basic setup. And then the other thing is when you import the animations into your project, you're going to bring those in and you're going to have to assign them to your uh, mannequin or whatever. And they're just going to come in as animation files. So what you want to do with those is highlight individually, highlight each one of those with a control key, select them all. Then you can right click and say uh, create anim montage. And he shows you this stuff in the video. But that'll create your four montages, and then in the original source of the um, of the animation, you want to go in here and check Enable Root Motion for these. And to find out for sure that the root motion is working, you can also go under here to your character um, under the animation and just say Process Root Motion, and it should start to show you what the root motion is going to do. If you leave that on, he'll just climb off into space. But anytime you're processing root motion, you can make sure that it's working by toggle toggling that on there. Okay, so you want to make sure that that is enabled on each one of those four individual animation files that are in the in the drive that you're going to download from his link. And uh, basically, once those are set up inside of the animation blueprint in here, um, and are actually in the third person character code. My apologies. In the third person character code down here, you're going to go through 
and there are spots where you're going to have to update some things. And I detailed this with some notes in here, so do not forget to add an arrow component to your capsule. The arrow is referenced right here. Again, that's looking at a spot to start the line tracing from. This section that's covered in here in the highlight requires the wall location and wall normal variables of type vector, which I talked about earlier. And if you follow this around, your input action key with his is a V key. I just put it on my space bar. So anytime the space bar is pressed, so if I'm normally just running around and jumping, this thing's still going to shoot out a vector to find out if I could climb or not. If it doesn't hit anything, I just jump. If it actually hits a thing, then I'm going to try and invoke this, uh, this climbing process. And uh, so it runs out the line trace and everything. And, you know, again, you're going to see all these things in his video. But I'm just kind of giving you the highlight reel of what you're going to need to make this work once you get it set up. You come over here into the wall height trace. And again, this section requires wall location, wall normal, wall variables, or height variables, all of type vector. And, uh, you know, what this is doing is it's just determining how high of a wall you're trying to get over. So it tells you whether you can just vault over top of it or if you need to climb up and jump over it. Or if the thickness of it, which is going to be looked at uh, over here, the back wall height tells you, gets you the idea of what the thickness of this thing is, whether you're going to land on it and walk across. And then from the decisions on this and the branch here, this is going to take you into two different paths. One path is going to be that you're either going to climb that, and it's going to have two different animation montages in here, and this is where you want to set those ones that you created for your character. So in the, um, in the mannequin folder where we put those montages, you would assign that there. And one is an animation montage for, in this case, climbing up the wall. This animation montage, which I've bypassed, is for jumping down. And I'm taking that out of there because I want to replace this with something else for what I'm doing. But in yours, this would be wired up in the pin, and you would just assign your animation montage for jumping down. So if a wall is just slightly thick enough that you could actually have a ledge or a lip on it, but it's not a continuous surface where you would can like walk like you've climbed up the side of a cliff, onto the top of a mountain or something, uh, but you're just going over like a fairly uh, mid-height wall that would play this animation to uh, jump down. And he goes through showing the process of how to determine the durations and things for this. Uh, some of that stuff is not in his, it's in mine. But it's all here, and if you, you know, if the wall height is of a different thickness or whatever, then we would go down to a different path in the tree, which is that we're either going to vault onto that wall or we're going to climb up onto the top of it. And again, you have montages here for that same thing. So on this one, you're going to play the getting up and m montage. And on the one that's on the bottom of that path, you play the vault montage. And again, if you didn't have those highlighted or um, turned on, enabled with root motion, and put the default slot group in your and BP, and you don't have these variables in here, and you don't have that arrow component on, this, this whole thing will break down on you. But with just a little couple bit of steps or whatever, you should be able to figure this out and get it up and running. Now, the other thing I'll show you in here, too, is on these um, traces where we're going back and we're looking for the wall heights and the thicknesses and all that kind of stuff. So where this says line trace for objects, there's a little thing down here called draw debug type. And I have mine set to for duration. So what will happen is when I invoke this code by hitting the space bar, it will come out and start my line trace. And then for the duration, whatever the duration of this whole sequence is, it'll leave those markers on the screen. The other thing is, <clears throat> under the components section of your third place character, if you highlight your capsule, there's a thing in here where normally when you're in the game, your capsule is hidden in game and this would be turned on. I have mine currently turned off for the hiding of the capsule so that you can see it so that I can see that the capsule is moving to the correct space with the animations that are being fired to make this thing work. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, once all those things are set up, you should be able to go and execute this code. And again, the output of this would be, since you have your debug traces turned on, when I hit the space bar in front of this wall, you'll see a red little light that's all over here. See these little traces? So again, what it's doing is it's shooting out a trace object directly from my knees where the arrow component was and saying, oh, we hit a wall, and then it turns your character to face that wall if it, if it uh, collides. Then it's going to look at the height with that second marker, determine it's something that should only play a climb up uh, montage, 
and then it looks at the overall distance which was that other marker that was on there so let me go back I'll show you the marker again on the other side and since that second marker hits the ground at a space lower than the marker that hits the wall it's determined that this wall is not thick enough to be a continuous surface <clears throat> so mine could have actually been just a little bit thicker and he would climb up on there I just have a thin wall on this one same same type of process but what happens is because this is a short wall um, you know the thickness of this and the height of it is low enough that he actually could vault over so those are where the line traces are and again it's showing the capsules being moved into the proper location after the sequence is uh, is run so the animation is moving your character with the root motion and then the capsule location is being updated where your character is if you are in you know doing this one you'll see that there's only one trace that gets fired out and the, the top of this thing can't be reached by the character in his normal jump or in the um, climb over code. <clears throat> it also doesn't detect the thickness. So what you do with the, that wall that's higher than this is the first time you jump up and while you're in midair you jump again. Then those other traces get fired at the right location and determine that's a surface you can climb up on. And as long as you don't have something that your character couldn't normally reach or climb up, you should be in good shape. Even a small wall like this, you can vault through there. Now I recommend if you're going to put windows in your area, you make them wide enough that a character could reasonably vault through there without colliding. And you see, like if I'm standing here, my feet are going to go right through that. So there's some stuff you'll have to play with. Um, also, if I run and jump up into the window and then hit that code a second time, if you're close enough, you should be able to fire that second climb through. And <clears throat> mine's just going to fall down at the end of the uh, thing, just a natural. I don't have any animations playing there. So hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit about how this works and where to get the code and to go check it out. Again, I wanted to give credit to the guy who uh, you know put that original thing up there, FAF Action. <clears throat> Watch his videos, go through and check it out, highlight the code, paste it in, set the variables up, and follow along. I also want to point out with this particular thing, I'm not the original person who wrote this. I'm just sharing it with you because I think it's a very light version of something like we would all want to get from an ALS4 without all the heavy complicated coding. And it might help you out with a project where you just need some basic, you know, let's climb up a wall and get on top of a surface type of stuff. Um, so as a result, since I'm not the person who wrote this code, I'm not supporting this from a question and answer perspective of things that I couldn't answer for you based on what's in there. I can answer what we've discussed here so far, but if you want to get into the details of how line traces work and, you know, why he uses certain functions in there and things like that, I'm not the guy to answer that for you. So hopefully you guys got something out of this and it helps you with whatever projects you're working on. Again, thanks for watching and tuning in. Like, follow, and subscribe for more content in the future. I plan to try and get at least one of these out a week. And the next thing I plan on really working on is to try and get a little bit of basic leg IK included in this and maybe look at a system where I could take the Paragon animations that I had retargeted onto another character previously so they have that leaning component and then put this basic vaulting and climbing script together and add some basic foot guy K to have the character stand on uneven surfaces. And if we can get all that stuff together, we basically have a very, very light version of climbing, vaulting, and foot and leg IK. Similar, certainly not as robust, but similar to something that you might run across in a thing like ALS4 that could be easily incorporated in other projects. That's what my goal is, is make things easier, simple simpler and uh, you know more widely useful so thanks for watching again like follow and subscribe and i will catch you guys in one of the next live streams take care